Welcome to Anime Review. This week we review the anime that Raker put at their number one horror anime of all time. Nope. 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 Another. Another was made in the year 2012 by the same guy who made Angel Beats, so you can bet your ass somebody's gonna end up in a coffin. We follow Koichi Sakakibara, a junior high school student who looks like Suzaku and acts like a less bitchy version of Shinji. He moves from Tokyo to go live with his aunt in his hometown, Yomiyama. After arriving, his lung immediately collapses because this kid is such a weak character that even air can kick his ass. After a month of trying to remember how to breathe, Koichi finally gets his shit together and heads to school having only missed one day. But while trying to leave the hospital, he runs into a creepy ass girl with an eye patch named Mei Masaki in an elevator. She says some cryptic shit before heading to the hospital's basement with her equally creepy-ass doll. Once at school, he ends up in class 3-3 with a bunch of people that, much like his weak-ass lung, I refuse to care about. But he also manages to meet a few important characters like now you have the class clown, you have the class creep, and Oscar I mean Izumi, the class bitch. And Yukari, who really, really likes Rihanna. While hanging out with Yukari, he questions her about Mei having noticed her school uniform when they first met. She responds by going into a fear seizure at the sound of Mei's name and forgetting her words. It's all good though because Koichi sees Mei on the top of the school roof and, like the lemming he is, decides to run headfirst towards her. After talking with Mei for a while, who everybody seems to avoid as if she were made entirely out of spiders, she informs him that Class 33 is closer to death than air is to her empty empty eye socket. Later that week, Koichi is talking to Naoya, who lets it slip that Class 33 is cursed. Eventually we discover that 26 years ago a girl was killed in that class even though everybody pretended like she wasn't. And that ever since then, if class has more people in it than when she had died, people start dropping like literally anything in Michael J. Fox's hands. Oh yeah, and that his arrival put them over that limit. This knowledge somehow leads Koichi down the boulevard of bullshit coincidental plot devices, where, for reasons that are never fully explained, he goes into a doll shop and runs into Mai, who decides to show him her face hole. And that is where our story begins. For the most part. As far as animation goes, this show looks great whenever anything shocking or important happens, but just so-so the rest of the time. Although I will admit that when the animation takes a step up, it takes a step up. And the transition's really never jarring or unnatural. It kind of feels like they knew they were going to have a really strict budget, so they decided to use the bulk of it on blood effects and glass. Also, is it just me or does this shit look like Code Geass? No, 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 seriously. Look at those Slenderman bodies and that George Lopez size head. That ain't natural. Now I know that I've mentioned music making the show before, but I'm gonna do it again. Honestly, of all the anime that I've reviewed so far, this is the one that I think would suffer the most if the soundtrack were changed. The orchestral background music alone sets such an eerie tone that the rest of the series doesn't even need visuals to create a sense of discomfort. It kind of sounds like a cross between Silent Hill and a really good Tim Burton flick. Couple that with the well-placed static and dead phone sound effects and the whole thing comes together with such a feeling of unease that you can't help but think that any minute now the main character's gonna just start ripping off his own face like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Well, fuck. As for the opening and closing songs, I feel like one was a hit while the other was a miss. The opening song accompanied by the visual sets the tone. It tells you right off the bat that things are gonna get dark, they're gonna get creepy, and dolls, there's there's gonna be dolls everywhere. The only problem that I have is with its pace. It's just that it's a little bit too fast for a show that moves so slowly. It gives you this sensation that things are gonna be crazy and out of control, which they never really are in this show. The end song on the other hand, well... I hate it. Not the song itself, it's fine as far as songs go, but for this show? Meh. It's very melancholic and slice of lifey, and while it does set a good sad retrospective tone, I would have liked to seen them just go with something, well, depressing. Or even just a really slowed down version of the intro song, like what Yatata Hikaru did with Kingdom Hearts. With the voice acting, I'm going back to what I said with Bully Cooley on this one, just stick with the sub. The dub isn't so bad that it's gonna ruin the show for anyone, but I feel like that the original VAs just did a better overall job and offered a better experience. When it comes to the characters, my major gripe is with Koichi. He's the main character, which means you would think things would be happening to him, which he would then have to react to in order to progress the story along. Nope! 
that doesn't happen. For the most part, things seem to happen around Koichi and never really directly to him. Other people's lives are constantly affected and or just ended, but nothing significant ever seems to happen directly to him. It's kind of like he's more of an observer to the things happening in the school and less of an actual character. He constantly sees things going on around him, but he rarely, if ever, does anything about any of them. And as he sees more and more and learns more and more about what's going on, he seems to rely on other people to put that knowledge to use. And for a character that they spend so much time focusing on, he's just really not that well developed. Even now, who gets way less screen time is a way more likable and relatable character because every time he's at the forefront of a scene it goes to explain or develop who he is and Koichi just never gets that. If I'm being completely honest here, outside of me and Naoya, I don't really like any of the other characters so when bad things happen to them, it just doesn't really affect me. Now we get to the plot, which... well, get comfortable. Okay, I'll start by saying that the overall plot is good. It is really, really good. I enjoyed the hell out of it and parts of it did keep me guessing. The last episode alone Oh man, I did not see that coming. But the big issue I have isn't with the plot, it's with what they did with it. Remember that thing that I said about what happened 26 years ago? Well, that's a big plot point that they give away pretty much immediately. The thing about horror is that there needs to be a good ratio between build-up, unease, and finally shock. This thing says fuck all that and decides to just tell you exactly what's going on pretty much from the beginning of the show. With that in mind, the viewers no longer left guessing, they're at ease, they know what's going on. And once they're armed with that knowledge, nothing is going to shock them. It's like giving someone all the answers to a quiz while they're taking it and then expecting them to fail. Aside from the main plot, there are some things that are going to keep you intrigued, they're going to keep you guessing, but nothing's really going to shock you, at least not until the end, maybe. Also, the pacing in the show is really odd. The first two episodes felt like they could have been one episode, while the last two episodes kind of felt like they should have been split into three. And lastly, this thing has a lot of red herrings and misdirection. They build up a few subplots that are seemingly just there to confuse you into thinking one thing when the reality is another. I mean, by the end, the story does make sense, but everything could have been so much tighter. Also, there's this scene, which... What the actual f***? All in all, this series reminds me of playing Gone Home, a game where the setting is unsettling and tense, but the payoff is less than expected. It seems to kind of follow Hollywood's horror format, where the first two episodes are build up and it's tense, but nothing really horrific happens, and that might turn people off to it. See, the thing about shows is that you have to get people interested right away, and if the first two episodes are just build up, it might leave them disinterested. In the end, this show does have a good story, but it falls a little bit short of the hype built around it. And with all that being said, another gets an overall score of... 7.3 out of 10. It's a good story, it's entertaining, but it's not gonna keep you up at night. And as always, if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button, check out my other reviews and comment down below telling me what horror anime you enjoyed so I can keep this scary train running throughout all of October. 